Hello my fellow pilots and welcome again to another episode of Dr. Hawk's Game Clinic, episode number 5. Dr. Hawk's Game Clinic is a fan-based show based on any of the games that might be of interest in the latest week, those of them being this week, Star Citizen and Destiny. So follow me this week as we go over Star Citizen's latest patch, a fan-organized tournament, as well as a very overpowered and fun weapon in Destiny. If you're interested in Destiny, you can click the annotation now to skip ahead, or stay tuned in right now, and we'll carry on into Star Citizen. There's a few events that happened over in Star Citizen this past week, the main one being that we've once again reached another stretch goal. I'll be covering that in the short term, but the big thing that I have actually want to talk about is that there is a community-driven tournament that's coming up. For those of you who are interested in actually participating in this, some of you might remember David Brennan, or Pleasure as he's known in the forums. He's taken to organizing his very own fan-focused, fan-driven, and community-orientated Star Citizen Tournament. This tournament is organized with 16 brackets available for those who are willing to put their Arena Commander skills to the test. If you're interested in signing up in this, you can check it out in the RSI forums down in the description below or on the forum post below. Be sure that you read the rules and regulations and for the sake of those who don't have time, I will cover them for you. The major points for the qualif qualification stage are as follows. You're allowed to use any ship you deem fit. So this can be any ship with any loadout that you so choose to use. Bear in mind that once you reach the knockout stage, you will be forced to use an RSI Aurora. So please do make sure that if you plan to take part in this competition that you have an RSI Aurora, as we will be unable to provide one for you. You're allowed to use any ship you so choose, and during the competition, or at least the qualifying stage, you do not need to be in team speak. However, once you reach the knockout stage, which determines who is the winner or victor, you will be required to be in team speak. There are more details in the forum post below, but the majority of the points are make sure you have an Aurora, make sure you don't shoot the referees, make sure that you have your ship of course, and make sure your connection is stable as unfortunately if you do drop from the match we'll have to consider that forfeit. Those are just some of the quick pointers that I can offer in the tournament. You can find more details in the forum post below. Make sure to check it out and ask any questions you deem fit in the video below. Now remember this is a tournament so you are competing for prizes. The first place prize is an Anvil Aerospace Hornet. So if you've been wanting to get your very own Hornet or maybe add one to your growing fleet, now is the time to compete. The second place prize is a 300i, followed by a third place prize of an RSI Aurora. These are all generously donated by Cloud Imperium Games, so thank you very much CIG for sponsoring the community events that we are trying to organize, and thank you as always for making an awesome game. More details will emerge as we finalize them, so we will let you all know when the qualifying matches are happening as well as the knockout stages and ultimately determining who the victor is and who the loser is. A big shout out to Pleasure for organizing this as well as RC Rubion for helping. Another big shout out to Beyond the Horizon Radio who will be participating me with narrating and commentating on the matches. And of course a big thanks to CIG. Stay, stay tuned in to Dr. Hawk's Game Clinic as we will focus on the tournament next week and give you better details as to what's happening with the first Star Citizen Community Tournament. In other Star Citizen news, we have once again and unsurprisingly passed another stretch goal. For those of you who are familiar with the 54 million stretch goal that was re reached last week, well guess what, those reclaimer sales have held out quite a bit. Chris Roberts posted another letter from the chairman saying we have passed 55 million as of, I believe it was two days ago. So check it out, read it, he has some pretty cool words to say involving some of the thought process that has gone behind the development of Star Citizen, as well as how he now views the production of Star Citizen in a different fashion as opposed to his experience in making other games. The highlight for those of you who are interested in guns is that remember that Preacher 22 chain gun? Well, you're going to be getting two of every person who is back before this point, two of those guns in your hangar by the time they roll it out. So keep an eye out for those guns and let me let me know what you think of them. The next stretch goal, or at least what we get to choose, is another ship-based pull. And right now there's a few ship options, but the one that seems to be leading the charge is the science. Uh, slash hospital ship and personally as Dr. Hawk I think you can guess which one I voted for 
go vote on the poll below. You can find the link in the description below. Tell me what you voted for, and hopefully we see that hospital ship in the verse. I think it would be very fitting for Dr. Ox Game Clinic. For those of you who have also not yet updated your Star Citizen client, now is a good time to do so. Patch 0.9.1.1, or Patch 911, is now out. It addresses a few minor concerns, one of them being fixing leaderboards so that your private matches do not affect the overall score of your leaderboard, as well as fixing the comm stab for the 300 series. Some of you have remembered previously, I've said with the previous patches, that the 300 performs... well, performs like shit. <laughs> It honestly had some nasty issues uh, with Comstab, and this patch addresses the 300 series, so you should be finding your 300i or 300, uh, 350r performing better than it did in the previous week. Be sure you download it at your earliest convenience, and let me know how it handles in the comment section below. Those were some of the major focuses for Star Citizen this week. The other one being that there's a monthly report, and the big highlight that I got out of it was that the FPS module is almost ready to show us what they have for us at PAX. So keep your eyes peeled. I'm quite excited for the FPS module, and I look forward to showing you guys some effective boarding strategies, if we can do that, or just at the very least, some effective shooting strategies for the FPS module. That's my little quick recap regarding Star Citizen news. For those of you who are interested in something else, we now have Destiny. Only one topic to go over for Destiny this week, as mostly I just want to draw attention to some little controversy regarding this specific item, specifically the Vex Mythoclast. This weapon was revealed a few weeks ago as one of the rewards for Destiny's hard raids. Fortunately enough, when playing with some of my friends, I somehow unlocked this beast of a gun. As you can see in the above video clips, it's essentially just a fusion rifle mashed together with a machine gun, and proves to be quite fun when used effectively. The thing I wanted to talk about in regards to the gun itself is that a lot of players are quickly labeling this as a overpowered weapon. What I find ironic is that despite this being both A, a very rare reward, and B, something that is not particularly obtainable by many players, it actually isn't really all that overhyped. The video that initially re that was released showing the Vex Mythoclast had players running towards the particular user in a fashion that made them out to be fairly inexperienced at FPS shooters. Upon using this weapon, I can clarify that it's not all that it's made out to be. It has a decent rate of fire, it'll take players out fairly quickly, but with Destiny's current meta being everyone use auto rifles, and anything else that shoots with a fast rate of fire, it actually gets outclassed fairly quickly by some of the other guns such as the Suros Regime, or the Shingen E, or any other fast firing auto rifle. The weapon itself, however, is quite fun to use in both PvE or PvP, and when fitted with a smart drift control stabilizer, will guarantee that most of your shots are hitting on target. Some downfalls of the weapon would include the fact that you can't use it in a scout rifle fashion, so if you're used to using longer range, more accurate weapons, this might upset you just a little bit, but upon getting used to its wonky recoil and small magazine, you can find that it's effectively a close quarters combat scout rifle slash machine gun. I look forward to seeing if some of my viewers can unlock this themselves. I know a few citizens I've raided with, and I look forward to seeing if some of, if we can unlock some of this weapon with fellow citizens. Let me know if any of you guys have tried the Vex Mythoclast, and let me know what you think about it. I'd like to see Destiny adding more weapons like this, both being their unique in appearance, as well as stand out from the usual riffraff of auto rifles, scout rifles, and other guns that are simply, quite honestly, reskins of one another. That was mostly the big topic I wanted to talk about Destiny, there's also been a few patch notes and quick fixes, but nothing too major as we're still waiting for the official fix that'll fix the overpowered assault rifles as well as shotguns. That's been most of my episode for Dr. Hawk's Game Clinic, episode 5 for this week. I'd actually like to take a quick thank you to shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Thank you very much for your support, and again, thank you guys for your ideas, the simple one being the little white screen that I'm using right now to illuminate my face. A big shout out to the Patreon subscribers. If you're interested in supporting Dr. Hawk, you can do so on Patreon.com, and a little as a dollar a month always helps. If you're interested in subscribing, you can also always do so by clicking on the fuzzy little hawk on the lower left-hand corner. And you can also find me on Facebook, as well as Twitter, 
if you're interested in following the social media sites. I can occasionally be found on Dr. Hawk on Twitch TV if you're interested in some game streams. And if you want, leave a comment or even a complaint in the video description below and let me know how you think I can improve. I look forward to seeing you guys next week and I apologize for the short episode as I kind of have to run off and go do some crazy Dr. Hawk things. So let me know next week what you guys want to see and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Dr. Hawk's Game Clinic. Take care and fly safe.